in this lecture we will learn about demand paging so we learned that virtual memory allows us to have a different view for logical memory and for the physical memory so we will take one example to understand it clearly so let's say we have processes p1 p2 p3 and p4 and each of them need 100 pages to run okay let's say our main memory itself has got space for just 100 pages in that case only one process can run at a time if i bring whole of the process p1 into the memory so in that case there will be no multi-programming only one process will be executing now let's see what are the problems with this procedure so first thing is that not all of the code that is written is executed so even if you bring all the hundred pages of p1 into memory not all of them will be executed in most of the codes there are part of code those are usually never executed like for exception handling some extraordinary cases and so on so usually they are never executed so on most of the time 25 pages are enough for execution so in that case bring those 25 cases pages and they will be executed okay so that way now you can run though all those four programs or processes you can bring into the memory and bring the most likely to be used 25 pages into the main memory that will be executed so your program counter wherever they start so bring that now it allows you what are the benefits it allows more users or more applications to be running it requires less input output so why there will be less input output because i don't have to copy if i were copying 100 pages for each instead of that i'm just doing input output for 25 pages for each process so less memory is needed otherwise for running four programs i would need 400 pages in my main memory so i am just with 25 percent of memory i am working and it will have faster response so how does it work so demand paging now you will say that okay this is very good and you are saying that okay most of the times the code will run with those 25 pages but what happens if something some exceptional case happens it might happen isn't it that's why i have written the code so in that case it's very valid and in that case what we do i will look at a page let's say pay program one was executing it had one to hundred pages and it was mostly executing pages one to 25 now let's say sudden exception happened and it requires page number 76 so what should it do so it will see that okay if page is needed reference to it if it is not in the memory then you bring it into the memory so i will memory operating system will generate a trap and i will move to the hard disk where or the secondary memory from where i will bring the page number 76 into the main memory and execute it so what we have is a lazy swapper okay laziness sometimes is good like here in operating system never swaps a page into memory unless page will be needed so this swapper is called a pager because we are swapping pages so whenever something is needed i will bring it from the secondary memory so we have this is the main memory so program a is running four pages one two three four and program b also require it's running with three pages so now what happens is so these are in the disk also four five six seven and we may swap out the whole process and then swap in a new one okay or we might swap pages transfer of paged memory to contiguous disk space so let's see we have valid invalid bits so valid bit means that okay that page is in the memory so i can use it 
i will tell that okay it's not in the memory so initially valid invalid bit is set to i that it's not in the memory so when you have a page tables so of frame numbers and valid invalid bit during address translation if valid invalid bit is in the page table entry is not there if it is i so there will be a page fault and what happens if i try to access a page and let's say that says that okay this is not there invalid it means it's not in the memory go to the hard disk and bring from there okay or from the secondary memory so here is one example so this is logical memory of my program it has eight pages and 0 1 2 till 7 and here is the page table okay it says that okay frame numbers are there okay and we have it says that okay page 0 is in frame 4 page 2 is in 6 okay and page 5 is in frame number 9 okay so this you can see from here also page 0 is in frame number 4 a is the content page 2 is in frame number 6 which has content c and page 5 has in frame number 9 okay so we have these here in the physical memory main memory now what happens if you try to access others so these are valid bits others are now not in the memory so suddenly if your program requires let's say page number six so it's not invalid it is invalid it is not in the memory so there needs to be a trap and then from the secondary memory it needs to be brought to some free frame okay so page fault that is the term used when you your program tries to access a page which is not there if so if there is a reference to a page first reference to that page will trap to the operating system so if it's not there it will trap to operating system and page fault will be there and say that okay bring it into the main memory before i execute it operating system looks at another table to decide invalid reference so it will abort if it is not for the process if it is not in the memory so i will bring it into the memory for execution now if i bring it from the hard disk i will have to find an empty frame then only i can copy it into the main memory so swap page into the frame i will copy it into that particular frame then so for example here if g i, I had to access page number six i will copy it from the hard disk to let's say this one i copy it here so now in the page table for page 6 it will be here in 7 and this will be set to valid i can execute it then so reset the table set valid bit to v restart the instruction that caused the page fault okay so i was trying to execute that page was not in the memory i bring it from the hard disk and then set the valid bit at page table i reset it and restart the instruction so page fault that is there steps in handling page fault so again pictorial representation uh, the code does a reference to the page it finds that okay it is invalid bit it makes a trap to the operating system and then operating system pages on backing store okay some secondary device it comes here bring the missing page to the physical memory okay the free frame and then we put it into the page table the example i showed to you now this is well and good but are we getting performance what's the performance for demand paging okay so page fault rate now if there is no page fault if you have enough frames there will be no page fault your probability for page fault will be zero if you have just got one frame in your page main memory then there will be always a page fault if you are using different memory access so what's your effective time effective time is so it says that it's 1 minus p p is the probability of page fault so 1 minus p is the probability that there will be no page fault and then this is the memory access time but if there is page fault with probability p then we have the page fault overhead mm -hmm swap out the page swap page in 
and restart okay so page fault occurs overhead it traps to the operating system finds the page in that hard disk or secondary memory swap that page so then we have to swap some victim page out to the main uh, secondary memory okay bring the new page in restart the instruction so this will take some time and now it shows us some small examples so mathematical examples so memory access time is very small okay it's 200 nanoseconds now average page fault service time so page fault when it occurs service time is 8 milliseconds so what will happen now and it says that okay so let's see p what is the probability so p is let's say so what calculation if one access out of 1000 page causes a page fault so your page fault probability is 1 minus oh it's okay 10 to the power of minus 3.001 okay so only one out of thousand pages causes page fault and that calculation says that okay so then it is fine 200 millisecond approximately and plus p into 8 so these many milliseconds okay so this becomes 8.2 microseconds okay so this is a slowdown by a factor of 40 so if you see this demand paging even though it causes requires less memory but it increases the memory access time by 40 okay but that's always there is some kind of you gain something you lose something so you have to find some kind of optimal value here i'm increasing in something here i'm decreasing in something find that so this is let's say um effective access time this is increasing this is memory use okay this is access time so access time is increasing memory is reducing this is the optimal point choose that one okay so here till here i think this one covers the demand paging so i hope you understand this thanks a lot